for loved ones of someone that's ill, usually a lot of the, most of the care for that patient falls on those people. And so a caregiver in a patient's life is usually the person that has to go get groceries, deal with all the basic day-to-day -day functions of life. And for a caregiver who is treating someone who needs cannabis, it's really important what state they live in. So if you are a caregiver to someone with cancer or MS, or chronic pain, in one of the 17 states where medical cannabis is legal, then you are actually able to get a, an identification card and, again, depending on the state law, are able to go and purchase cannabis for that patient or even grow cannabis, depending on, on what the regulations look like. Now, if you're in a non-medical cannabis state, and you're, you're, it doesn't mean that someone that you're looking after wouldn't benefit from medical cannabis. And if that's the case, and your doctor and the patient have decided that they want to try this treatment, I urge you to be extremely careful. The illicit market isn't some big, scary, horrible place uh, for marijuana, but you know it's not the easiest way to get this medication. And this is why there is a huge movement uh, around the country trying to pass laws to make this legal. So that if you're in a situation where someone you love uh, is, is going through a situation where they need medical cannabis, that you can simply just get an identification card and go to a store and purchase it instead of driving down random alleys looking for a medication that is going to help your loved one be more comfortable, possibly eat, and possibly save their life. So again, as a caregiver, it's important for you to know the laws just as well as a patient does. And depending on what state you're in, uh, you're going to have more or less rights to help that patient with their medical cannabis use. And all of this information, as far as the legality and steps you can take uh, to help procure medical cannabis for a patient you're taking care of, is all on our website, americansforsafeaccess.org.